what is source of the ganda is also source of the goods. So Kama is the community that is very distant to LNG. And other communities around there are all beneficiaries of the largest or benefaction of uh, energy, the session of Kokama. So they brought a report, a petition, sorry, that we should look into their plight. And what the committee did was to send our seven man committee to Port Harcourt to embark on what you may call one in the eyes, what two in the ear, to avoid rumor. And they went and discovered that. Actually, what is source to other communities around LNG should be also source to Kukama. And consequently, we recommend that Kukama should be recognized as first community in court so that they will be able to benefit from the, whatever the LNG is doing to others. That's why I said in the case of what is source to the Ganda is also source to the goods, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, community. Uh, within a radius, uh, probably 20, 20, uh, 23 kilometers from the source. And we also discovered that this particular community does not fall within that distance of 23 uh, kilometer radius, uh, which is what is, they call nautical miles uh, range. And we told them clearly that if we are going to persuade uh, the LNG to be able to I swear to your opinion that it will be just a political arrangement, not because you are within the radius upon which you are an impacted community uh, to be given this. But I don't know if we are going to handle this politically. If we want to handle it politically, we could include them uh, to be part and parcel of this. Because when you see light uh, in the other community and you don't see light in this community, it looks strange. But if we are considering, if the House is going to consider it on political consideration, we can. But if we want to do that, these are normal rules uh, within the radius upon which these companies operate. We might be falling out of the point. If it's not intending with that act, it's like leading to nullity. And they don't arrive, arrive at if I may use the word. So possibly, uh, I won't say uh, stop the report, step it down a little bit so that because I believe that as of the time this uh, petition was laid, PIA wasn't in, in place. So make, step it down, have another look at it vis-a-vis -vis what is contained in the PIA Act and then the real to on ground, then we'll return the report again for further decisive actions. So you still have a little, a little more work to do. For themselves. What Asa is talking about is the map, I mean the map not probably they brought to him. So I would suggest, sir, and I plead. Hey, with the modern equipment and sciences available, IT, in, at the comfort here, you can determine the distance between whatever location. So it doesn't, it doesn't I, I believe, it will, it, will, it will not do you any harm. No. And it will cost us nothing to step down and do further legislative action. So that we'll be sure of what we're doing. This is the integrity of the house we want to protect. Okay, uh, so, sorry, uh, chairman and colleagues. With the instruction of the chairman, <laughs> I hereby step this further down to enable us to make a comparison between what is the act okay. and what is in our recommendations. You, using the scale of the map. Using the. <laughs> Oh not, using the, the, not using the scale of the match. And I, I'm doing that not because of what I said, but because of instructions. instructions. The next report to be considered is that of, that of the Committee of Population by, by the petition, on the petition by Mrs. Agebe and two others on the non compliance of the impl or implementation of the House resolution of 15 September 2004 by the Federal. Housing Authority, now Federal Minister of Housing and Urban Development, and now invite on the JDL to give the synopsis. Just about, um, Mr. Chairman, um, it's a question of aligning ourselves with the resolutions of the Fifth Assembly. 
because a temple does not destroy itself, uh, we found out that the recommendations or the resolution of the Fifth Assembly is in tandem with what is doing in Ninth Assembly. We naturally align ourselves to avoid impunity from those concerned. Just that's all. Often. One, there was a downsizing because of the economic effect of the organization. And they decided about seven and something persons. Now, they retained some. And after three years, they also saw that the economic something has not improved and biting. They lay out three persons again. And these three persons are saying that they didn't lay us off at the time the 770 people were laid off, that it does not follow, and that their own they should be retained. And sixth, fifth assembly, sixth assembly, seventh assembly, eighth assembly, which I also saw, went the same way. The solution has not been found. The workers have not been returned. Don't you think that we will make a compromise way by saying, okay, pay them off without retaining them back? Offset all their salary for these years and retire them effectively. Instead of say, pay them and still retain them. That has not solved a solution. Bring a, a, a solution. So I suggest, Mr. Chairman, uh, distinguished honorable colleagues, that the amendment I'm seeking is to defer that these persons that were laid off after uh, three years of the original one. They paid their entitlement and retired. Paid their entitlement instead of retaining them. That's how I feel that that is a solution. Because the House, Fifth Assembly, Sixth Assembly, Seventh Assembly, Eighth Assembly has not been able to implement and effect the change. And the people are suffering ongoing continuously. That's my suggestion. Representation as members of this parliament. And where our constituents are treated unjustly. It doesn't mind who is there, what they are doing. What we should stand for is to should stand for justice. The procedure that was deployed in this particular case, was it fair? Was that justice? I think the position of the committee, I want to align with it 100%. And we should rather enforce, maybe if they refuse to do, instead of now compromising our standard, we should look for sanctions to deploy on the agency to force them to do the right thing. That's my own, that's my own position. Thank you. Committee on those committees. Can we refer? We are not yet there. Allow us to visit this one. one. Then we can come back to that one. <laughs> Three, four. The fourth report to consider is that of the Committee on Public Petition on the petition by Mr. Peace Obialo against the University of Nigeria and Suka on over 3,831,100 Naira salary indebtedness to him. I now invite Honorable Jedi Lagbosu to give the signature of the report. Elder. For University of Nigeria and Suka. And uh, there was controversy, and they set up what they call the University Contract Verification Committee. And the University Contract Verification Committee found it satisfactory that the piece should be paid about 3.7 million. So the committee looked at the matter and recommended that the vice chancellor should be urged to pay the piece of the other the money since the University Verification Committee had already said so. In other words, we align with the, the University Contract Verification Committee. And what they did was a good job. So the committee is recommending that the VC should pay for the trace of peace and harmony. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chairman. You just have one recommendation. So, recommendation one. Thank you. Move that we'll divide to plan to report progress. Thank you.